How's my arm look, by the way? Really swole. Better. I fell down the flight of stairs a few days oh, ago. Oh, I was looking at the the muscle. <laughs> the yeah, muscle. You, look, you look pretty strong over there. I'm like, you ready for this? You ready for this? Arnold! <laughs> Arnold! <laughs> Arnold! <laughs> oh. <laughs> look at that thing. You see the jelly? Is it blah, 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 blah. We should call this the gun podcast because we all... Gun Welcome show. Welcome to the yeah. gun show. <laughs> Do, 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 do. None of us got permits for these things. You know what I'm saying? We just walking around with these things. Flex them. Oh, let me get this one. Actually, I have a concealed yeah, carry. Good. Get it? Because you can't see it. <laughs> that was a good one. That was actually that was good. Um, you two, I would be worried about. I yeah. am asking for those permits. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with Brandon and Sam. Walk is Texas Ranger. <laughs> All I care about is family. <laughs> Vin Diesel. Yeah, Vin Diesel's here. Oh, Special yeah. guest. Yeah, Vin Diesel. Family. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> Yo soy Groot. <laughs> am I the asshole for calling my stepsister the ugly stepsister because she freaked out over a nickname? I'm going to say no. No, no, you are. Because you just gave her two nicknames now. Not only did you give her the nickname that you called her, but now you gave her the nickname of the ugly stepsister, like yeah. in Cinderella. That's... That's two nicknames. That's very inconsiderate. Yeah. My female 29 family jokingly refers to me as princess or the princess because I have a reputation for being opinionated and sensitive. This is mostly because of sensory issues. So certain noises or textures grate on me to an extent that I will leave the room or avoid touching things. I'm also just a picky person and I like things how I like them. So my stepdad started referring to me as the princess, like... Don't open the car window. The princess will get upset. My stepbrothers and mom use it as well. It's a running family joke. Well meant. I've never been offended by it in the 15 years that it's been a thing. My stepsister, Georgia, female 30, hates it. She used to snap whenever anyone said it. But over the years, she just started making the odd passive aggressive comment about it. Everyone ignores it because Georgia has a habit of thinking everything is about her. And if it's not about her, the reason it's not about her is because we all hate her, which then is still about her. So our family is visiting my parents in the countryside for a couple weeks. Georgia has brought her boyfriend, Jason, along. Ooh. I've met Jason a couple of times before at dinners, and he's a nice guy, and he fits in really well. This morning, me and mom were making breakfast, and Jason came down to help out. We normally have breakfast in the kitchen, so eventually everybody starts gathering at the table. We always make the tea and coffee last so it's hot when we eat. And we all had the mugs out and Jason offered to make the drinks. I told him not to do mine because I liked it a very particular way. And he said, okay, princess, I'll just watch how you do it so I know how to do it next time. And we laughed. It was a joke. <laughs> the next thing we know, Georgia shouts that she's sick of everyone calling me the princess. She then swore at Jason for being just like them, a.k.a. my family. <laughs> Since everyone thinks that I'm so special, what makes that her? And I replied, oh, you know, the ugly stepsister, obviously. No one said anything. But Georgia burst into tears, pushed her plate onto the floor, broke it, and went upstairs. And Jason <laughs> ran after her. He's since come down to apologize for her. She hasn't come out of her room. My stepbrothers are on my side. The parents say I should have not said anything and she would have calmed down and that I just went too far picking at an insecurity. That might have been true, but I'm sick of her making everything about her. The joke doesn't have anything to do with her, and I am, as are my stepbrothers, sick of her acting out to force everyone to behave how she wants them to. Am I the asshole for taking the argument there? And then I'll read the comments afterwards. That's all you care about. The comments? Yeah, that's all you ever care about. I'm I'm letting you know that I'm gonna read something before you guys transition. That's what I was I'm letting you know. Right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just sounds. <laughs> They're thirty. Yeah, that's what They're I 30. was stuck on. That she's thirty and she ran up crying. 
and stayed in her room. Well, yeah. If you don't get you some business. She's sensitive. She, she is sensitive, but I think the parents kind of hit it right on the head. If, like, there's only two sisters, and one of them is the princess, and she's always kind of had somebody to be compared to, even if it wasn't intentionally, mm-hmm. that she's always going to potentially think that she's not good enough because they're not calling her that. You know, OP said in the beginning, acting as if she's like, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm, like, not bothered by it. It doesn't bother me. It's, like, been 15 years that they've been calling me that. I'm like, it's not a bad thing that they're calling you. Yeah. <sighs> they might just be calling you high strung, but they're calling you a princess. You know, like, there's princess is a positive connotation for the most part. So... Mm-hmm. You ever read The Princess and the Pea? She's annoying. <laughs> She's annoying. Yeah, forget that princess. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, okay. Okay, but if we're comparing the two, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, the yeah. princess and then there's the stepsister. The ogre. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say ogre. That would have been. Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I get you saying. It is generally positive. Honestly, Fiona was a baddie, but. No, Fiona was a baddie. <laughs> like, strangely had a crush on her? What? I was like. <laughs> I'm glad when you turned into an ogre. <laughs> like I was into it. <laughs> the princess, but that's was, me. <laughs> the princess was just a little too. Eh? <laughs> princess was a baddie, but like ogre Fiona was a baddie. Uh, <laughs> ogre the, Fiona went crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can get it. How it can be created as an insecurity over time. If like there's like the perfect pretty sister, seen. So by do you think she's ugly? I don't think she's ugly. I think she has insecurities. Well, and the, her, the her sister like, the being perfect like. and being like, yeah, you're the ugly stepsister. That is probably crushing to hear. So no, should a 30-year-old run up the stairs and break her glass uh, plate? But she probably hit her where it was. she was really tender, you know? So sensitive spot. Yeah, I guess from that standpoint, I guess she is kind of the asshole for saying You shouldn't be calling people ugly. Mm-hmm. Especially ugly people. Don't call ugly people <laughs> ugly in front of the, your friends and family. Because especially when it's family and friends, you're like, oh, we all know. <laughs> we love you. That don't change how I love you. We know you're ugly. <laughs> so I'm not going to point it out that you're ugly in front of your boyfriend. I'm already ugly. Now you got to like make fun of me for it. <laughs> I n- <laughs> <laughs> am I crazy or am I off base with this? I never understood... Side note: Why, why bullies bully people because they're ugly? Like, bro, like, I'm on the bottom rack right now. <laughs> like, you gonna be mad at me because I don't look attractive? Wait, do people get bullied because they're ugly? Yeah. Oh. Or like, not conventionally attractive. Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Or like, kind of stand out. And they're like, oh, you're ugly. Your haircut's bad. And it's like, bro. Which I'm like, it's almost better to be ugly because I think most people are just average, which is like middle Mm -hmm. so it's better to be hot or ugly because you're like unique looking Uh, to your thing (laughs) you said earlier i don't really know what you're talking i mean i get it kind of but i cannot have a conversation with you about it because i don't understand what you're saying i get what you're saying but i have no (laughs) foot in either door i'm just i'm just hearing your opinion i'm like "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm." brandon what you said about the bullying I feel like they usually go after people that don't have a lot of confidence, and so those end up being people that don't take care of themselves very well, mm. and so they can be seen as ugly compared to. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. Because if you have low confidence, if you ha- if say if you have acne, because usually people that are getting bullied are people that are younger, so they're going through puberty, so they have acne or they're they haven't hit a growth spurt yet or they don't eat very well because they don't understand that or they can't get a good haircut because they don't necessarily have money for it or they don't know how to take care of themselves because they're not being taught. So they have all this bad insecurities. about. They don't have confidence in themselves, which makes it easy for people to bully them. I do agree with the confidence because I do think confidence can repel a lot of bullies. But I don't think people are ugly because they're not trying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, what are you saying? I think some of the things that she said is true. Like, some people are not taking care of themselves, so they look less presentable than other people. But some, like acne, like some people just have acne. Yeah. It's not like they didn't, people were trying to get rid of the acne. They were like, I can't do anything about it. I've done everything and I just got acne. Mm -hmm. That's not them not trying. Yeah. That was like a little point. Yeah. But I feel like confidence is half of what makes you attractive. Yeah, confidence is very important. And make like you can be a very pretty person, and, and you're have not. No if you're not, if you have no confidence, people yeah. are gonna be like, mm, I don't know. Mm, yeah. like, eh. 
So it's all in the confidence. It's all in the yeah. confidence. And she's not confident. <laughs> She, and now this makes me think she's more of an asshole now that I think about it. Because I feel like the sister knows this. So, top comment. <laughs> um, what you said very likely reflects how she feels about herself in this dynamic. You paint her as self-centered, but I'd bet that she has felt subordinate to you her whole life mm. and is trying to claw back at some attention for herself. As princess, you're very particular needs and wants probably great on people around you to some extent. They have probably spent their lives catering to your picky personality, and under that friendly family joke lies a bit of real resentment. To be blunt, you are the center of attention, and you have become accustomed to it. The way to fix this is to apologize to your sister, try to have dialogue with her about this, and try to be a bit less particular in your own wants when it puts an extra burden on those around you. Your comfort is not more important than those around you. Mm. You're the asshole. Ooh. Dang. Sheesh. Hold on. Yeah, let that one sit for a minute. Mm -hmm. That was that was like yeah, it was very. <laughs> I like that. That was that a was, think piece. That was a, what a good parent would say to their kid. Unlike the person in this story, they really had a bad mom. Like this next story. <laughs> yeah, people keep following you, but I don't post anything on TikTok. I'm like, why are people following me? Yeah, same. I think Brandon's the only one out of all of us that. Posts yeah, Brandon's anything. capitalizing off this. <sighs> Not. Good enough though. Like <laughs> I need three thousand followers. You'll get there. He, he needs three thousand followers because he's trying to uh, live to stream oh. video games, and he to wants 3, to be 000? able to like yeah. have like a different interface On so he YouTube can show you TikTok. his face and he can show you what oh, he's TikTok. gaming. Oh. So he needs three thousand followers. So if you guys are interested in watching Brandon be scared at horror games or excited at you know like shooting games, pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. like he had earlier with those with those guns. He's got more of those in these video guns. games. So go ahead and check out Two uh, CC Brando, CC on Brando. TikTok. Yes, and get him to three thousand followers, guys. If you're interested in that, <laughs> catch some of his lives. Brandon, when are you going to be streaming next? What what days do you stream? Tuesday and and Thursday late night to early Friday morning. <laughs> Okay. You know what? I'm actually going to subscribe to you now. I'm going to help you get to that three thousand. You weren't well, following you, him before. Well, yeah, you my cousin. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I can't even front because Sam be commented on every post. Yeah, of Sam's course. I'm one of his biggest fans. Dude. Sam's in that live stream. Am I the asshole? Oh. No, we're good. Oh. Oh, that's like my throat. Okay. <laughs> he was being choked by that chain. Hey. hey. I'm a chained man. <laughs> I'm mad that you just cha you just took that in front yeah. of everybody. Now everyone's gonna think that that was your. Everyone, thing. it was Maddie's joke, and it was good. And he did, he made it seem like it wasn't good when I said it. No, I hyped it though. It was good. That's oh, why I stole thing? it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, so this next story comes from our subreddit Cover Level Pod. Hey. <laughs> we are only on the second story. Am I the asshole for calling my sister a bad mom? I, 21 female, have a sister who is 24 female. Let's call her Mary. She has five kids, all under three years of age. They are some of the prettiest girls I've ever seen. I love them very much, but recently my sister and I got into a heated argument about her kids coming over in diapers that are so full it's almost on the floor. <laughs> Clothes that are stained up Ooh. and dirty and they are never bathed. It's very frustrating because when they come over, she never brings them over with food, drinks, diapers, wipes, and clothes, and she expects me to provide all of that, and that shit is expensive because I have a three-year-old myself. Facts. Well, on to the argument itself. Mm, she really told good. me that she was going to work overtime because she's jumping back and forth places right now, and I sympathize with that, but I go on social media and see that she's drunk and at another party like... Damn, girl, this is your second party of the week, mm. and you have no home, and your kids don't have nothing they need, <laughs> but you're popping out in an expensive two-piece set, so I group message her and the baby daddy and tell them to have someone come pick their kids up before I drop them off at the police station because I'm babysitting for free and because I thought y'all were at work, and then she told me that she was going to get them in the morning, so I called CPS. Am I the asshole? Whoa. Yes. Yes. And this is just from like me being a kid and having interactions with CPS. Don't bring CPS into it. Unless 
I think like abuse is happening, which I guess you can say not cleaning them is kind of abuse. But I think that's an extreme thing to do. I would say once the kid get picked up in the morning, say, I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. You need to figure out your life and figure out your story. And it, it sucks. But I'm personally, like, I think getting them into the system is like really a bad thing to do and that's just for my idea of what the system is and I don't I wouldn't want my kids in it there are some people who have kids and they immediately get that switch like they're irresponsible and but they have a kid and they're like I know I have to start changing my life and there's some people it does not happen and it probably didn't happen for her she has five kids under three mm-hmm. that's like two years of pregnancy I want to know the configuration of how that happened. You're not even supposed to have sex six months after you have a kid. How are you having five kids? There's a, a twins. There she had to, to have twins. like tw- twins and triplets. Yeah, there have to be a twin triplet. Because I'm like, that's crazy if you're knocking that. Anyway, you, so you're not the most responsible person in how you're living your life, but it it's just the CPS part for me that is because you can see them having party like, oh, why are you doing all that? But as long as the kids in your care, you take care of them until you can get them back to their parents and say, hey, this is what my thing, I'm like, there's a boundary, I'm not gonna watch your kids anymore because of how you're living your life. I don't wanna be a part of this anymore. You need to learn how to make better decisions and then step out of it. But that's what I would do. CPS is a little bridge too far for me. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Ben? <laughs> I agree. I think, um, I think your sister is totally an asshole, and I can see why you called her a bad mom. Um, she's not taking care of her kids, and you're trying to take care of your kid, yeah. and she's bringing all of these babies over here, and then she's not even being, re- being responsible. But um, I've never personally dealt with CPS, but I've had cousins that have dealt with it. And yeah, um, for them, I had I had cousins that called CPS on family members before and it was beneficial because their mom was not good but I think in this specific situation I think you should have maybe waited out in the morning and then be like listen like like Sam said I'm not dealing with this anymore Mm -hmm. um but you are closer to the situation and you did describe some definite neglect um so I don't know. I I agree with Sam. I'll say that. I agree with Sam. The only reason I'm unsure is because of the whole neglect part. Like, there's a difference between being lazy and just not doing it Mm -hmm. in general. And I think that's where I'm like, ah, I mean, she could be right, but she could be wrong. I personally, though, I've never had any... I've never been close to anybody dealing with CPS, so mm-hmm. I, I just I don't know how bad. I know that there's a, all the systems are pretty much corrupt, but it's like I don't know how bad CPS could be, especially for someone that is kind of going through what seems to be neglect. Especially if the baby daddy is doing the same thing that the, the right. mom is doing, mm-hmm. because for my situation, they use CPS to take it away from the mom to give it to the dad to be uh, like he gets yeah, full custody. Yeah which was beneficial because it stayed within the family. And I'm assuming yours was they were potentially taken out of putting, put into the system. The no, it thing. was with me. Okay. And it was, they were concerned about my mom, mm-hmm. which she's a good mom, but right. she's a single parent. We weren't rich and there were situations where we'd be at home. And so they were trying to bring CPS in to say, Hey, are you neglecting? Are you abandoning your kids? Mm. And I'm like, so we're like scared. We don't want to go. And it's it's even, I think it's kind of worse in this situation because there's five kids. Mm-hmm. If the dad's, it's not going to put in the dad's care, they're probably going to be put in the system. They're going to be spread apart. So they're going to be breaking apart from their siblings, which is already scary. It's just a tough situation. But there, that's the bad, that's the hard part about the story. There is really no right answer because right. you're either in one bad situation or you're in another bad situation. Hard place. Yeah. There was like some organization that was paying people to not have kids, like paying for birth control for people to have less kids. Yeah, I remember that. It was a while ago. I think there was something shady about the organization and how they were doing it, but 
the general premise of it, I'm like, I kind of get because people, people who are having kids should not be having kids. Some people should not be having ki- <coughs> kids, but there's nothing stopping them. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep doing it and keep popping kids out mm-hmm. and causing more issues because they don't have the capacity to take care of these kids. And it just starts these cycles over and over again because these kids grow up in these situations and they don't know the right thing, so they end up doing the same thing. It's, it sucks. Mm-hmm. I hate it. If I were to have the conversation, if I was to sit down and have the conversation with them, I would try to do it in a nice, pleasant environment, something very quiet, something maybe excited. Like a birthday party for the kids. Like I did not want to sing that one. I heard it. <laughs> she had her finger ready. <laughs> but we also, I want to say that I don't think, I don't think they're the asshole. I don't think you're the did. asshole. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think it's a cut and dry situation. Right. And it's hard to even display what the true weight of it is in some paragraphs on Reddit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was hard for me to say, you're the asshole for calling them. I'm just saying, in my situation, I would try to get CPS as late as possible. Mm-hmm. Unless it was like clear, like they're just beating the crap out of these kids. And you're like, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Maddie's face, too. <laughs> That's the smirk. That's the smirk. She stay having that smirk. <laughs> Am I the asshole for refusing to host a birthday party because my nephew isn't allowed in my house? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this is fun. <laughs> is it fun and petty? It is, it's a little petty. I like fun and petty. It's got to do with yeah. an animal a little bit. Oh, no. Dogs. I can't let my dog <laughs> leave my dog for <laughs> more than 10 minutes. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Am I the asshole for refusing to host a birthday party because my nephew isn't allowed in my house? I, 24 female, live on a four acre property that I bought for cheap for my grandma who moved to a retirement community. My nephew is turning 16 at the end of the month. My sister asked if we could host his party here on the family property, meaning at my house. I told her no because my nephew is not allowed in my house. My nephew does not respect boundaries and treats everything like his plaything, including the boundaries of my older black lab, Davos. He constantly chases him around and tries to pick him up, despite me telling him to leave him alone. Davos has arthritis and can't be chased around and hates loud noises, which my nephew is very loud. He doesn't have any behavioral disabilities or anything. He just doesn't care about other people's wishes. My sister blew up at me telling me that I was putting a dog before my nephew and it was my grandma's property that I can't dictate. I told her that it was my property. I bought it and tended to it and pay all the bills for it. My mom called me and asked if I could just put Davos in a room during the party and suck it up for just a day. But I said, no, this is his house and he's allowed to go wherever he wants and I won't shut him in a room. Now my family is divided, some of them calling me immature and selfish and others saying I'm right while some, including my father, refuse to get involved. Am I the asshole? Shout out to the father. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out Abba. (laughs) That was a good one. I don't know. That's weird to me. Like, I feel like this goes back to that whole pet thing, the whole pet conversation. That dog wouldn't know any different. If you just did it for one day, but I think the, I think what she wants to admit is that she has more beef with a nephew than she actually wants to admit. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, no, the dog can do whatever he wants. It's like, are you really just going to let like a dog, like what if an, a guest came over and they were uncomfortable with the dog being around? Are you going to put the dog up then? Probably. But, mm-hmm. but I hate my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> I hate his gut. <laughs> I won't stand that. And you're going to chase my dog with all the writers around here. Yeah. I think you're totally right. They, hate, they don't like the nephew, so they're using any excuse to not have them come in. Because 16 years old, probably annoying. He's probably super annoying. And there, you can't say anything to him because the mom, obviously, I don't know what the mom is doing in the situation. And she's like letting it happen. Mm-hmm. 
So in this situation, this is com- you completely being petty. Because it's a lot of the stories we do where people make these rules and they they could easily just bend them for a second just to let things happen, but they make these rules that you have to follow. I'm like, you don't. This is something you made for yourself. And it's not even hurting anything. Like you said, the dog's not going to know. The dog's just chilling. Dog on his retirement tour. <laughs> Dang, Brandon. Davos is chilling. Big <laughs> chilling. <laughs> um, I agree, but I don't think she's the asshole for saying no. I think if she thinks that her nephew is annoying and it's literally her house and she doesn't want him around because it sounds like he would also like potentially have no respect for her things, not even her. I mean, obviously her dog, but just in general would probably be rough and stuff up. Um, no, <laughs> no, you don't need to come over and host the party at my property, not the family property. Uh, Cause I bought that. So she said for cheap though. She did say for cheap. So she fleeced she, the grandmother. She groomed the threw grandmother. Threw her into a home. She was like, Grandma, give it to me for 10 bucks. Chucks her in a home. <laughs> steals the property. <laughs> and then she's she pushing squats. every go- all the family like, I paid $10 for this. Grandma's like, I didn't I condone this. Davos is right outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she did. She brought Davos, scared the mom. The mom's like, okay, I'll go. Davos, ah. no, no. Davos has a piece. Davos like, <laughs> no, Davos got that that that. Uh, 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 puts the gun away. You're like Davos is a thug, and because he's got that arthritis, he's got that walk yeah. to him too. He's, uh, like, <laughs> he's got the chain and yeah. everything. <laughs> um, Shout out Davos. But Davos. I think I do like your approach. Now I'm thinking about it more. I like your approach, and this might spurn change in him. If your own family's like, I don't want you here. <laughs> I'm your aunt, and I don't like you. This is going to affect you later down the line. You're obviously probably not the most fun to be around. Mm-hmm. Hey, if your aunt doesn't want you here, maybe change, buddy. If Davos hates you, it's a problem. Davos got, and Davos got shooters. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get on the bad side of Davos. And I've always said that. You've always. And it's a weird thing. You've always said it's the first time it's actually made sense. <laughs> But you have said that since I've known you. It's very <laughs> strange. She always said that was a shooter. I'm like, what does that mean? And you're like, that was a shooter. Just don't mess with him. Do not mess with Davos. I think, I think everybody else is upset too because, you know, they couldn't buy it because they're the poor friends. Like this next story. <laughs> <laughs> Keep laughing, keep laughing. I'm looking for Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my poor friend that he's actually the privileged one now? Oh, Whoa. no. <laughs> no. All right, let's get right into this one, too. Oh. One of my very close friends, Nathan, 29 male, and I, 28 male, met during our first post-college job at a prestigious finance firm, and we immediately bonded over the long work hours, shitty middle management, and general soul-sucking nature of making PowerPoint slides and Excel sheets all day. For the next few years, a lot of our friendship revolved around us talking about work and how much we hated it. A few years ago, I decided that I couldn't take the corporate grind anymore, and I quit my job to move into the nonprofit world. While I'm now certainly making less than I would have at my old job, I'm exponentially happier, healthier, and absolutely love the work that I do. I also still make a very good salary, 80000 a year, which I feel is more than enough money for me and my needs. Nathan has been ambitiously climbing the corporate ladder and recently became a VP at his firm. He makes well over $300,000 a year. Okay, (laughs) Nathaniel. Nathan grew up in a very poor family and his relatives are still financially unstable and often ask him for money. I, on the other hand, grew up in a comfortable upper middle class suburb with parents who have always been financially stable. They're not millionaires, but if anything ever happened to me, they could and would help me until I could get back on my feet. Nathan does not have that privilege. 
I recently got offered my dream job where I would be making slightly less money than I am now, 75k a year. Despite the money, I'm genuinely giddy about this job prospect and was pumped to tell my friends. However, when I told Nathan, his response was, I'm glad you have the financial privilege to take a pay cut. Not, wow, I know you've been really wanting this job for months now and have told me all about how excited you are, congratulations, or anything along those lines. I'll admit that I snapped back at him and I told him that he makes triple the amount of money that I do and that at some point he needs to realize he's now got privileges of his own instead of pointing out mine. The conversation got a bit heated and we agreed to hang up and cool off before talking it over later. Now I'm wondering if I should apologize to Nathan for what I said or if I should stand my ground. I'm feeling angry and a bit defensive, which I realize is exactly the reaction that a spoiled rich kid would have. However, I do think it was a bit mean of him to say that at that exact moment when I was so excited. And while generational wealth does give privileges that income alone does not, he literally does make over triple the amount of money that I make now. So it seems a tiny bit hypocritical for him to be calling me privileged. As a final note, while my parents certainly are well off, they do not support me financially in any way and have not since I graduated from college seven years ago. So I leave the judgment to you all. Am I the asshole? Mm. There's this thing called... Um the brown tax. So it's frequently associated with people of color who get more privileged jobs, that they grew up poor and they have jobs that they make more money than their parents did and their family did. And it's usually something in corporate where their families were either in retail or more blue collar jobs, so they make more money than their families. And they call it the brown tax because when you strive, when you get a better education and you go up to higher jobs, typically people in your family, just because of socioeconomics, are in a lower status, will ask you for things like, can I get help with this? Can you help me buy this car or help me with rent and all that kind of stuff? So it's like a tax on you being successful where your counterparts, typically white, don't have that same thing, that tax mm -hmm. dragging on them. So we might be making the same money, but because you don't have your family needing you, because families rely on each other, you don't have your families needing you at the same rate as me, I'm actually making less money. This is extreme because he's making $300,000, so that's, that's definitely, <laughs> that's a big extreme. You are privileged, buddy. I don't know. Just so you know, you are privileged. Even people who are in, who have this quote unquote brown type, they are privileged. We we're making more money than, our families did, we're more well off. It is a thing, but you also ought to realize there is other things in life that, not only financially, but life situations, like your family are going through things that their family's not likely going to because of how they were raised. It's just a lot of different things weighing on you financially, emotionally, mentally, that is not happening with your other counterparts. So you are almost at a lower rate than someone in your same job who doesn't have those issues. So from that standpoint, some people do need to look at that. I don't know the races of these people. It's not, it doesn't even have to do with race. It's just typically it shows up in race. That's why they call it the brown tax. But it could be a white person who was born poor and still has the same issues with their families. And then when they make more money, they still have these situations that they have to deal with. So from that standpoint, I, I just want the reader to know about that kind of stuff because that's something that some people don't even think about. Even I heard about this concept last year, and I'm like, oh, that is so true, and I didn't even mm -hmm. realize it. And it's why a lot of people of color like almost get discouraged when they like, why does it feel bad when I make more money? And you're like, because there's other things that come with it. It's just an idea that I want the reader to know. I don't think you're the asshole for, because you, you just felt good. You should be able to talk to your friend and say, hey, I got this new job. You ain't got to make this about privilege and money. I'm just saying that. But you might want to see that could be the perspective that this friend is coming from. Like, it's hard. But 300K, you got enough <laughs> <laughs> You are. You are right. You're good. <laughs> you are privileged, buddy. I think he hit it right on the head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the that whole brown tax, though. I, I've heard about it. I just didn't know. So thanks for being here. Yeah, a thank you for that. explaining that. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was really cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't got anything else to say. <laughs> okay, there's an edit. 
wow, this really blew up in a way that I wasn't expecting. I've spent hours reading as many comments as I can, and I wouldn't let, and I want to thank all of you for your perspective. I have really learned a lot about privilege and what it's like to grow up poor from some of your stories. While it's nice of many of you to say that I'm not the asshole, I do think I approach Nathan's situation with a lot of ignorance and potential assholery. Um, commenter said it best. I don't think it matters who's right here. What matters is whether Nathan has been a good friend and one that's worth keeping. If the answer is yes, a heart-to-heart -heart talk should sort this out. Genuine adult friendships are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Don't let a misunderstanding ruin it. Mm. Nathan's been my buddy for years, through thick and thin, so I called him back up to apologize. I mentioned that I really didn't know what his experience had been like and that I was proud of him for all that he'd accomplished and that I just felt a little hurt and unsupported when he called out my privilege from the get-go instead of being happy for me. Right. It felt like he was minimizing my success, but it turns out that he was just having a rough time at work and didn't respond in the best way to my job news. He apologized too, and we had a really nice conversation. I think that since we started our careers at the same place and time, that it's easy for us to compare ourselves. And we're both guilty of that competitive comparison with each other. I'm glad that they, they stayed friends. Yeah, I think I think even the, the update that he left was very yeah. mature. And it is. Mm-hmm. There was something definitely that anybody could take it away from that conversation, I feel like, even if it was the top commenter and how he dealt with the situation yeah. afterwards. Because if you have rich friends, keep your rich friends. I'm keeping my friend who makes 300K. I'm putting work into that relationship. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you're the average of your five friends. If you have rich friends, you don't have to worry about splitting a check like our next door. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That's my favorite Brandon. one of yours that you did. Brandon? <laughs> mm, that, that was smooth. It was smoother than... That was smoother than, than was, butter. It was smoother than butter. That like, was so like, good. Okay, okay, okay. Am I the asshole for ordering more food after I heard we were splitting the check? What is up with people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, These are multiple stories all doing... That means... I'm like... When I heard the other stories, I'm like, okay, this is just... There's one petty person out there. There's multiple people doing this. <laughs> yes. I it would never go in my head. If anything, I'm ordering less. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring that overall yeah. <laughs> thing down. Let's bring that overall bill. So I, 21 male, and a few friends went to celebrate a mutual friend for his birthday. It was organized by his partner, and we were planning on going to a kind of upscale restaurant in our city. Think suit and tie, dress code enforced. I showed up with my girlfriend and we were having a good time. We checked the prices beforehand and me and my girlfriend set a budget we wouldn't go over since we have other priorities besides dumping it all on a dinner party. Mm. We order the food and are having a good time. We stay under budget, but I noticed my friend's partner continually ordering more and more expensive food and drinks. I don't think much of it since it's his partner's birthday. When the bill comes, the table of 10 is suddenly told mm. that the gift was that we were expected to split the check. Oh. Now it's my friend's birthday and I've known him for close to a decade. I would have been fine splitting the bill however expensive it should be. To put in perspective, me and my girlfriend's bill came out to just under $200, give or take. The entire bill was nearly $800 and they still wanted to get dessert. <sighs> I noticed that me and my girlfriend had the least amount of food and didn't get multiple appetizers, you know, drinks, etc. The thing is, I know I'm more financially stable than my friends my age since I really just had the cosmic luck of landing a decent job out of school. So I could have contributed, but frankly, I felt this was a trap to get me to pay more than we budgeted. If they communicated prior to the dinner as an obligation, that's one matter, but suddenly telling us after everyone is mostly done eating seems sketchy at the very least. I had a quick text conversation with my girlfriend, and we both decided to order expensive desserts, raising the price here even the more. Petty. Here for the petty. I'm here for it. Now, suddenly, when the bill comes, some people, especially my friend's boyfriend, doesn't have enough money to pay equally between everyone. They start bickering in a public restaurant, and my friend accuses me of intentionally raising the bill outside of their budget. I countered with how it was kind of rude to just expect people to pay stuff for him, and he said that it's his birthday. To keep the peace, I paid for only his meal, but left his drink and dessert tab for everyone else to split. I left with my girlfriend and paid our bills. When we were leaving, they were still arguing over the bill. That was yesterday. <laughs> 
I woke up this morning to find on multiple social medias how I'm such a terrible person, how I raised the bill by ordering extra food. Mind you, they were all planning on desserts while we weren't. My girlfriend says I did the moral thing, paying for my friend's food, but I'm livid I got peer pressured into it. Am I the asshole? Well, I'm trying to figure out the math. Okay. So they said their portion was $200. 200 amongst like <clears throat> 10, amongst like 10 people. But the total bill was 800. Yeah. And they they bought the least amount of food of everybody. Cuz if it's 10 people, it's cheaper to split it. Mhm. So you actually save money. Well. Well, let's no, say his math is just wrong. If they ordered the least and they were at 200 well, I guess, yeah. yeah if, they're, if their meal was at 200 n- oh, I don't oh. know how they ordered the least because that's 25% of 800 Okay, okay. It looks like in the edit, he gives the, the price breakdown. I need breakdown, the math. So, okay. I need the price breakdown. Okay. Info. Decided to put the vague prices since I know my friends have read it. Me and my girlfriend's bill came up to $200 for just entrees plus one appetizer. The bill was nearing $800 at just entrees and appetizers. Mm, okay. The final bill came out to be 1.2 to 2K ish. Okay. But the crime comes in when you add up the additional drinks for 10 people, it came out to 2K plus. Oh, okay. And most importantly, <laughs> myself and my girlfriend didn't drink since we worked in the morning. Uh, okay, that explains it. Because I'm thinking $800. I'm like, you're making. That makes sense, yeah. You're getting over on them because you spent $200. You're only paying $80. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's much better. Yeah. And how many people were there? 10. Ten. Mm. I must have went to Fleming's, man. Fleming's. <laughs> Expensive, man. I guess it's rough. Because I can only think of my experiences when we've had birthday things. And it's it goes two, two ways. Either the, my friend has a partner where the partner just pays for it. Right. Or you're just single friends. And then either one of us just buys it or we split theirs and they don't pay anything. Mm -hmm. So the friend, the birthday person never, that is true. The birthday person never pays, but I guess I don't have any friends who would run it up either Mm -hmm. because you go in the situation, they know they're not going to pay, but they're not running up the bill. And, and they always do the thing where you act surprised like, Oh, you're getting my, you know, you know, they pull their card out. They're like, like, (laughs) no one's saying anything. (laughs) Pay it. (laughs) Pay your Guys, bill. Guys, the birthday girl's putting her <laughs> card down. Pay like, it. Pay the bill. Like, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always, we always take care of the birthday person, but no one's being petty and like running it up. They're not buying tons of things, knowing they're not going to pay for it. And we don't talk about it beforehand, but it's like known. It's This is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So this situation is wild to me to just say, hey, we're all splitting it. Mm-hmm. When it was... It's wild to me, too, because the friend group that I grew up with, we never split anything. It was you pay for what you, you for bought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that. And when, and like you said, when it comes to birthday parties, I'll be honest, we're a little younger. So if we had the parents come with us, the parents would pay for either the person <laughs> and we pay for ourselves. Yeah. Or like in my experience with Brandon, like we've usually gotten each other like like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it's it's similar to what to what you said. Um, so I don't think that he's the asshole for doing this. Honestly, I would have been (laughs) mad too. Like I get why he feels like he was trapped because it's like, like he said, it wasn't discussed beforehand and now he has to split an over 2k bill and he didn't buy any drinks. He didn't buy any dessert yet. He did buy dessert. dessert, He did afterwards. He ran it up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, give my money's worth. So yeah, I don't think he's the asshole for doing that. I would be mad at my friends, and I would maybe consider who my who I hung out with at, at that point. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's funny that this story gets brought up because we were just talking about something like this. There's a, a Twitter viral video, and um. <laughs> I'm not splitting the bill, Shawty. That's crazy. You expect us to split the bill? You got lamb chop. You got steak. You got some other Look at all that. Look at what all they got. They talking about splitting the bill. What did you come out for? What did you come out for? We come together. We split the bill. 
My thing is, y'all doing too much. Y'all doing way too much. We didn't order all that. Going out. The table was split 50-50. Half the table was like, we're not paying for this meal. Like, we're because not how much splitting. was the bill? The, the bill maxed out at $4,600. And how many people were there? That was like 10 to... Nine. Nine. There were nine people there. For, for an almost $5,000 bill. And they were trying to split it evenly. <laughs> And half of the people were like, we didn't buy all the stuff that you bought. We're not yeah. doing that. He's and it was like, for a birthday. Do they girl. break it down who bought what? They didn't break it down, I don't think. I haven't seen like someone that was actually in the video break it down. Yeah. But like the dude that was in the video was like, you bought steak, you bought lamb chops, and you, I don't even know what the f- you bought. <laughs> We're not splitting this. No way. Because he's like, it's not my fault that y'all want to wild out and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, for me, I I always, I I don't understand the concept of splitting the bill evenly <laughs> for the whole meal. I just, I, I really don't. Because it's like, especially on those, like, really fancy variety places, it's like, there's some places I'll go and I'll just, like, I... I want a burger. There's some places yeah. I go and I'll probably want to, you know, wild out a little bit. Yeah. But it's like that shouldn't be on everybody else at the table for what I want to do. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. The only thing I would get is if I would understand it if is if it was agreed upon beforehand that we're going to go to a place where it's like, you know, finger foods, you grab whatever. Mm-hmm. So we're going to order like five things and we'll just split it evenly because everyone's supposed to be kind of getting the same amount of food. Now, of course, you always have those friends that they eat a lot of food them, and they yeah. take somebody else's portion. Yeah. And it's a little upsetting. And maybe at that point, you're like, all right, I'm going to get my own food from now on. But we we didn't we didn't have to go through that rough patch because we were all just like, yeah, just- I'm going to eat what I'm going to order. So, no, we're not splitting any meals. Yeah. Have, have- have you been in a situation where, like, you had to split a bill? That's a good question. I, I haven't. And I feel, hmm, I feel like yes. Because I definitely see your guys' perspective being younger. Because this was from when I was younger. Now we just would buy it for each other. But when we are younger and we were broke, there was splitting happening. Mm-hmm. But we weren't. <laughs> We ain't going to no place that's more than $100. <laughs> like, the most fancy we might go to China Buffet or something. <laughs> like, But, like, a place where, like... Yeah. That's the problem is when you think about it. Because when you split, someone's going to come out on top and someone's going to come out on bottom. But when it's small enough, you don't care. Mm-hmm. But once you start thinking about it, that's when it's too much. If you ever, like, try to figure if you're making it out ahead... That's when it's too much money. If you're even if that idea even crosses it, you're like, oh, we're getting three large pizzas. You don't think about what the split is between people. You're like, okay, three large pizzas. I'll give you six bucks or something. But if you're like, now I'm figuring, I'm paying you five hundred dollars. Did I come out on top or not? You're like, That's too much money to yeah. be splitting. It, it, it's tough because like in Miami, like you either. Either you, you can't split the bill more than two ways or something like that. Oh. So it's like either one person's paying or two people are paying for everybody. And it's like, so technically, everybody's always splitting the bill in Miami. Right. And it's like that at like every single restaurant. Oh. And so it's just like, man, those, those, I'm telling you, peak drama. Am I the asshole for letting my son get cornrows? <sighs> my son. So... Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for letting my son get cornrows? I... <laughs> <laughs> you guys saw me when I... Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining Maddie and cornrows. <laughs> I may have a picture. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do it. I was trying to get small braids in my head, but I look like Post Malone. Like, imagine <laughs> Post Malone when he was in his White Iverson stage. That's what I look like. And I took a picture. I said, this, this picture could never see the light of day. Well, just before we read the story, because I don't know what it's going to be. I'm not against white people in cornrows. I th- 
I think most people don't get mad about white people having cornrows. It's about the reaction to black people in cornrows. Mm. It's about the double standard. Yeah. Mm. That people viewed with black people in cornrows are viewed differently than white people in cornrows having the same hairstyle and get treated differently. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I think it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not against white people having cornrows. That's me. Okay. I agree with that sentiment. Okay. I, 28 female, am a stay-at-home mom for my three kids, one male, three female, and five male. My husband, 30 male, is a biomedical engineer and yes. works a lot. He's mixed. His mom is half black and his dad is black. I'm white. Our oldest son looks somewhat white with blue eyes, paler skin than our other two, and light brown 3C hair. Prior to this, my son had natural hair like the other two, but absolutely hated anything about the maintenance it requires. My husband has cornrows. He always has, and our oldest son loves them. He asked to get them himself, so I said yes. My sister-in-law ended up doing it for him last weekend. I never thought it would be a problem. I make sure to spend quality time with each of my children on their own every week. So after dropping my younger two off at my parents on Fridays, I took my oldest out to go to the park get ice cream, and go go-karting. We were having a lot of fun until a white woman at the go-karting place chastised me for letting my white son get cornrows. I told her that he was mixed, but she said he looks white and he shouldn't have cornrows and called his hair trashy. My son was luckily not paying any attention, but it really upset me and I'm wondering if I might be the asshole. Am I the asshole for letting my son get cornrows? No. And I... Of course, it's a white person calling him out. Yes, that's what I was going to say. You, you have no It's right. going to be very rare if a black person is going to be like, go up to a white person like, you shouldn't have. That's, that, it's almost always a white person saying, you shouldn't do this because of what it's against black people. I'm like, who are you, lady? Mm -hmm. You have no skin in the game. <laughs> Some people that look like me, including me sometimes, not necessarily with black issues, but... People like us just love to tell you that you're doing something wrong, I guess. Oh, 100%. And yes, not only with black people, with, uh, black issues, it's with uh, LGBTQ issues. Yep. Like, you got to speak up for something that you have nothing. You riding harder than, like, this thing, because there are some bad things that we're like, you probably should speak up on. But there's things I'm like, you're riding hard on this issue that we ain't even checking on. Right. This is not the thing I'm worried about. Right. You think this is what's been oppressing my people is white people having cornrows? I tell you it's not. There's much bigger issues that are <laughs> off on my thing that I'm going to be worried about. And I bet she's not even talking about those. She nah. She not care about those issues. Nah. She stood when Colin Kaepernick was <laughs> kneeling. She's like, I like standing. My knees are bad. Yeah. <laughs> I got bad knees. I am fried. Yeah. <laughs> she over there with, what, what's the name? What's the dog name? Oh, Davos? Davos. <laughs> <laughs> Davos is real. Like. So what you're telling me is this old white lady that told this kid is the grandma. So maybe the grandma's property should have been taken from Davo by Davos. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like maybe mm -hmm. she should be in a retirement yes. home is what I'm hearing. Put her Davos, in there. Davos did the right thing. No, what I'm saying is that white lady who said something, she's related to Rosa Parks. She's a civil rights leader. <laughs> Give that white woman a medal. <laughs> she's fighting for black people everywhere. <laughs> no, she's the worst. Yeah. So the big thing, though, is white people need to be speaking up about issues, but the ones that actually matter yes. to black people. Yeah. You're fighting a fight. Like you said, that doesn't matter in right. the scope of grand scope of things. Right. Okay. I want to be seen as a human being. So <laughs> how about you focus on things that <laughs> relate to that? Or uh, reparations. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw this guy. I think he was a Hispanic dude in the gym. Bro had on a do-rag. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> I remember just looking at him. I was like, what is that doing for your hair? <laughs> But in my head, I just kind of chuckled to myself. But he's over here, just like because he's like, he, I don't, where, where I'm the, uh, out where I'm at. I don't think he was expecting to see me out there at the gym, you know. And he's just like, oh, wide eye, and just like trying not to look at me. And I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't care that you're wearing a do rag, but I mean, it looks weird on you. It doesn't. It's not going to do anything for your hair. But. Yeah. And then a white lady comes up. You can't wear do rags. <laughs> you're offending this young yeah. man over here. Yeah. 
<laughs> this <laughs> nice African American man that's sitting right here working out. <laughs> Like, Give hey. him your do rag. Put it on. She's like telling put wave on, check. Put on the. She's, if she's on wave check, then she can say it because somehow she knows wave. Then she's fine. <laughs> but I'm like in this situation, yeah. Quote unquote, it's not wrong because he is black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're just because you're white passing doesn't. Mm-hmm. That's why you probably shouldn't say something. You don't know who these people are. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're looking like what's his name. Adonis, Adonis. That's yeah, a, you that's Adonis out who here. I thought about. <laughs> Even though Adonis looks black to me, he's just very light. I know who Adonis is. Okay, I was about to say the, the face you're the making. The white stare. Like, yeah, like, who's Adonis? Were you just trying to visualize him? Yeah, yeah. Because I was like Adonis, very pale, very blue pale. eyes. Yeah, very but then I was like, eyes. he does have very curly hair. That you got you would... that. Is that what type of hair? Is uh, the 3C? I think she said three C. Yeah, I think that's three C hair. Right? Okay, but you're Type saying like, the one you don't like, like his facial features. Yeah. Okay. His facial features commonly associated with an African American person. <laughs> That's exactly how Kathy would have said it too. Yeah. And you know what else goes crazy? The stories that we're gonna hear next week. Next, next week! week. So thank you guys so much thank for joining you. us for the Comfort Level Podcast. We'll see you next week. Next week. Next week. Be there. Be Be there. there. Or be square.